Supreme Court has not found any fault with that. Supreme Court has said that the process of selection and appointment was illegal. Hello everyone, you're watching News Epicenter with me, Maria Shaquille. The varsity war in Kerala continues to escalate with a showdown between the Kerala government and the Kerala governor. The Kerala governor, Arif Mohammad Khan, has issued show cause notices to 11 vice chancellors in the state, claiming that a recent Supreme Court ruling has made it clear that their appointment has been illegal. On Sunday, Arif Mohammad Khan asked the VCs to resign, claiming they were either appointed from single name panels or recommended by selection committees with non academic members. This has become a political flashpoint in the state with Kerala Chief Minister Pinaray Vijayan accusing the governor of interfering in the government's work. The LDF even launched protests against the governor's action, accusing him of pushing the agenda of the Sangh Parivar. Nonetheless, the ball remains in the governor's court. After the vice chancellors moved the High Court against the governor's order, the court ruled they can stay in office till the governor, as chancellor, takes a final decision. Arif Mohammad Khan has asked the vice chancellors to show cause for their legal right in office. They have been asked to respond by November 3rd. But the fight is far from over. And now, I'm getting the CNN News 18 mega exclusive. I am being joined by the man in the center of this firestorm, Kerala Governor Arif Mohammad Khan is joining me live. Arif Sahab, really appreciate your time. Today you have sent show cause notices to vice chancellors of two more universities asking them to explain why you must not remove them from their post. Your office had sent notices to nine vice chancellors on Sunday and they have got temporary relief from the Kerala High Court. The LDF government, sir, is saying that you are doing all this with a larger design. There is a purpose behind it. They have, they have uh, every right to say whatever they like, but what I am doing, I have made it clear that Honorable Supreme Court in its judgment has clearly laid down the law. If the selection committee he does not meet the requirements of the UGC regulation hmm. and an appointment is made based on their recommendation, the words which Honorable Supreme Court has used are, it will be considered void ab initio. Right from day one, there are illegal occupant of the office. The second ground which they have given is, that UGC regulation requirement is to make a panel of three to five names. If single name has been forwarded to the chancellor and appointment is made of that person, that will also be considered as void ab initio. So I am the only thing that I am doing is to uphold, apply the law as laid down by Honorable Supreme Court in the case of the technical university to all the universities. Similar as Chancellor of the University, I was under, I am under obligation to take this step. But if any citizen of India goes to the court asking that this should be applied, okay. then they would have been removed by the, I mean, after Supreme Court judgment, there is no escape route. So they are free to say whatever they feel like because they have been using the universities for a long time for their own political ends. The recent example where an underqualified person 
relative of the political secretary of the chief minister was going to be appointed. In fact, the vice chancellor had announced that tomorrow we will issue the appointment order. So I stayed there. And not only I stayed there, because my order had not reached by that time to the university, the court, the Honorable High Court also stayed that order. Hmm. 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 Uh, Arif Sam, uh, you know, the news reports that are coming from the ground are suggesting that the political class there, that the government has reportedly counseled the vice chancellors to ignore or overlook your order of seeking their resignations. Don't you feel that this will set the ground for a protracted legal battle with uh, what will, uh, what many say uh, would be far-reaching constitutional ramifications? Nothing, absolutely nothing. I had tried to give them an honorable, I had suggested an honorable exit. And therefore, I had requested them to submit their resignations hmm. by 11.30 in the morning on Sunday. Since they did not, they were directed, news has appeared. It is not the government which is directing them. It is the LDF, the political outfit. We, every paper has carried this news that mm. LDF has directed the vice chancellors not to heed to my letter. So they did not resign. And I had told them I will wait till 11.30. After that, I shall start taking whatever legal steps are needed or required in order to uphold the judgment of the Honorable Supreme Court. Hmm. Therefore, after 11.30, show cause notices have been issued hmm. and they are, uh, and the matter also came before the Honorable High Court. The hmm. Honorable High Court has clearly said the power rests with the Chancellor. If you have any complaint against that, um, and mind it, I'm not finding, Honorable Supreme Court has not find, found anything wrong with the qualifications of the incumbent. They have said that the process, procedure of appointment is erroneous. It conflicts with the UGC regulations. In my letter to them, I did not say that you are inefficient or you lack qualification. No. I said in order to uphold and to apply the law hmm. as laid down by Honorable Supreme Court, I am requesting, so, and, and remember it, that the words which have been used by Honorable Supreme Court are void ab initio. From day one, your appointment is illegal. What I had told them, I had tried to suggest to them an honorable way out, where they can re resign they can take sort of moral stand that Supreme Court, Honorable Supreme Court has said so. Therefore, we feel that uh, our appointment was also made in the sa same manner. We are submitting our re resignation. I had suggested an honorable way out. Okay. They, they, under the pressure of the LDF, they did not respond. So it's up to them. Now they have been given time to explain why this law should not be applied to them. And the date is 3rd of November. Okay. Uh, so I am looking at the statement coming from one of the vice chancellors. The VC of Kanur University has said, and I am quoting uh, him, if the decision is to remove me, then fire me. I will not resign. He says, no state has dismissed all the VCs like this one in India. The chancellor can fire vice chancellors, but there are certain fixed criterias. Don't you think the Chancellor's action will create uncertainty in the universities now? He is only trying to create confusion. I have not sacked any Vice-Chancellor. I have merely suggested to them that in the light of the decision of the judgment of the Honorable Supreme Court, it will be good for you to resign. I have not sacked any, any Vice-Chancellor. I have not found fault with any one of them. I have said only to uphold the Supreme, Honorable Supreme Court's judgment and apply that law. The, the, the judgment by the Honorable Supreme Court hmm. becomes law of the land. So he is saying something which I have not done. This statement would have become maybe justified 
if I had sacked any of them. I have not sacked any vice chancellor. Okay. Um, Arif Saab, the LDF government is saying that all your actions are part of Sangh Parivar's agenda. How will you respond to that? They are, what they say, I need not comment on that. They are saying this since, uh, uh, I think they are saying it since November 2019. I had joined the office in uh, September. So they, they have been continuously, they have been saying this because they found very early that they can't use me as a rubber stamp to re regularize hmm. all the Ill illegalities which they are committing. They are very upset with me because I stayed the appointment of the, of the partner of the uh, uh, political secretary of the chief minister. So they are very upset with me. Let them, let them take out their frustration. Why I should comment on it? Okay. Sir, don't you think this disagreement which is going on between the government and the governor and as you said since November 2019 uh, will affect the governance in Kerala? Uh, there is no reason because I am only insisting that you follow the law, you follow the rules and they are used to... Uh, I'll, uh, for, for, uh, there are many instances and many reasons where they should feel upset with me. For instance, I'll give you the, the reason. Hmm. They wanted to, uh, they wanted to give in cooperative societies, they want to give vote right to the uh, government officers hmm. who are appointed as administrators. I said it will be, it will be like butchering the democracy. So I refused to sign that. They wanted to um, they wanted to deprive the Lok Ayuk of the powers which Lok Ayuk is enjoying since last more than two decades. I refused to sign that. And then they wanted to change the process, the process of selection of the vice chancellors. Hmm. They wanted to change it. They wanted to decide. They wanted to have three representatives. <laughs> the bill has, has been passed <laughs> by the assembly. Hmm three rep government representatives and in that they have provided that the panel shall be prepared by majority because I was insisting that you won't send one name, you will send a panel. So they, the way out they found was that they increase the number of persons who will sit on the selection committee and they will decide by majority whose name will in be included in the panel. That is totally in conflict with UGC regulations. Therefore, I refuse to sign them. Their idea of governor is that whatever they say, uh, governor should sign it. No, my idea of this office is I have taken oath to protect, preserve and defend the constitution. There are also talks, Arif Saab, about possible legislations to remove governors as chancellors of universities because there have been multiple examples in other states where chief ministers have had similar uh, run-ins with the governor. You know, let me give you some examples. Bengal Assembly has gone ahead and made that move. Tamil Nadu, Rajasthan, Kerala may well be joining that list. They are most welcome to do it. I had offered to them about six, six, seven months back that I am not going to sign on all these proposals which in my view are irregular and uh, illegal. Therefore, you become the chancellor, you bring an ordinance, I will sign it. I have no problem. If they, if they bring, they will never bring. They wrote me four letters. Even the other states you are talking about, they have not implemented it. Why they have not implemented it? Because world over, the, the rather the academic world will never accept executive interference in the universities. They will never accept UGC. They depend heavily on UGC for funds. UGC will never accept that. Accept what? Not my removal. Not any any governor's removal. They will not accept interference by the executive by the government in the affairs of the university. The autonomy of the academic institutions 
is a principle which is universally accepted, acknowledged, and upheld. Mm. So they are; these are only, uh, I would say, these are only hollow, absolutely hollow threats. But I had offered to them for continuously for one one month every file regarding the universities or from the universities which came to my office. I kept directing them to the to the uh, chief minister's office. Then why did he not accept it? If they want to bring some law, and if they want to bring, welcome by all means. Okay. Uh, the Kerala government, Arif Saab, is planning to move a review petition against the Supreme Court's order revoking KTU's vice chancellor appointment. Uh, secondly, the LDF on November 15th will be holding a rally uh, outside Raj Bhavan against your move. What will be your suggestions to the ruling party? I do not have to make any suggestion to them. That is the that is the right of any citizen of India. and more so of the government if they want to move a review petition but to target the governor and threaten him that we will not let you move we will hold a process a demonstration by 100 only today it has been announced 100 100000 people will crowd the raj bhavan and chief minister has said that uh, that the governor should be ready to face the consequences they are, they are holding out threats that is all they and i love these these, these kinds of uh, to fight those who hold out illegal threats you know, i have i have gone through much worse in 1986 my house was attacked i was attacked five times so i don't care what they are going to do i am it will make my resolve even firmer that i shall not allow the interference by the government in the functioning of the universities university autonomy must be upheld we cannot allow government to appoint vice chancellors irregularly so that they remain beholden to them and make all kind of irregular appointments as the example which i have given you in the universities Do you know Professor C. N. R. Rao, Bharat Ratan, who is who has our the India's biggest scientific establishment? Hmm. In his letter to Kerala governor, he has said that Kerala has very robust school system, but no brilliant student of Kerala is ready to stay in the state. They all go outside. Professor Panikar, who was vice chancellor of one of the Kerala university, and later. he was chairman of the higher education council he in his article has said that kerala students bright students they don't want to pursue further studies in kerala because of the uh, problems universities are suffering from we uh, i have a duty i do not know whether i shall be successful or not successful but at least i will make every effort and with all sincerity that our university universities start performing better and they, they are able to protect their autonomy my last question to you since you find yourself in the middle of the storm there is a view that there was an error of judgment uh, was a legal opinion sought and if yes did it err at some point sir I do not forget that I am myself a lawyer, and I have so many friends who are senior lawyers in Supreme Court, and never expect from me that I will take any action without reflecting on it for considerable time and without consult. I have this advantage. So many of my friends are senior lawyers in the Supreme Court. The during the time when I practice, uh, the there are advocate on the court. very competent who are uh, who are engaged by top most names in the legal world they are very good friend of mine since last 30 40 years and i must tell you i consulted almost every one of them okay. in fact some of some of them were of the view that when a judgment is given under quo warranto then no need of show cause notice is still i went by the opinion of those friends who said 
that in order to be more careful, first you give you you issue a show cause notice and ask them to show why this law, which has been laid down by Honorable Supreme Court, does not apply to them. I have given them notices. Suppose they come with cogent reasons, which I have not been able so far to take into cognizance, I will listen to them. But as far as the facts as they appear, they are documented. Each one of them has been appointed either through a selection committee okay. or which chief secretary or government officer was a part, which according to Honorable Supreme Court renders the appointment void ab initio. Or single name was sent to the chancellor and he, was, he had no option to exercise his discretion. That also Honorable Supreme Court has said renders the appointment void ab initio. All right, Arif Mohammad Khan, Kerala governor, in his fiery best, his first and only interview till now on this entire crisis that is happening in Kerala. Really appreciate your time, Arif Saab. Hope to interact with you with another issue when we see uh, that happening. Thank you so much. Um, on that note, we are slipping into a short break. Uh, coming up, as Rishi Sunak scripts history becoming the youngest and first Indian origin Prime Minister of Britain. Politics over major majoritarianism erupts back home here in India between the BJP and the opposition. That debate after a short break and also an exclusive with Dr. Shashi Tharoor.